If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it. Photon Store is the best place to get PCGO codes online with instant email delivery. They already have Darkness Ablaze available in bundles of 50 codes, single codes, and the pre release promo box. What are you waiting for? Make sure you use Tableman code for 5% off your final purchase when you're checking out. Millibotsgaming.com is the best place for you to find all the Darkness Ablaze singles you might need for your upcoming decks. Any Eternatus, anything you need. Make sure you get it at Millibots Gaming, and when you're checking out, make sure you use Tableman code for 5% off your final purchase. Tableman. Hello everyone and welcome back. Thanks so much for tuning in today in this morning live stream. Thanks so much for joining me today. We are going to be playing with Tricky Jim's uh, spicy deck with Golisaput and Aerodactyl. Golisaput is a brand new card from Darkness Ablaze that deals 30 damage plus 50 more for each of your opponent's Pokemon V and Pokemon GX in play with Hard Time Slash. So you can deal a lot of damage depending on what they have on the bench, especially to Eternatus if they overdo it. Yeah, which you would expect a good player not to just bench the eight Pokemon against a Galisopod deck, but you never know, right? And then next up we have Redactyl with the Fossil Fangs attack dealing 90 damage, and if you don't have any Pokemon GX or EX on your bench, this attack does 90 more damage. Therefore, you are free to play these like Crobat and Eldegoss in order to get the bonus damage because they do not reduce it. We have Hoopa as a single prize attacker with Evil Admonition, dealing 10 damage plus 20 more for each of your opponent's Pokemon that has an ability. We have Jirachi for support, we have Six Sigun as well for extra damage counters because we do have four Scoop Up Nets already. We have um, Evolution Incense to search for the Golisopod. We have the Unidentified Fossil in order to find our Aerodactyls. And I would love to have a 4 4 line of Golisopod, I think that's one of the changes I would make. Uh, we also have uh, three Pokemon Research Labs so that we can get their Dactyls out without needing to evolve through the Fossil, but if we need to evolve, it's not the biggest of deals. We have Triple Acceleration Energy to cover the Attackers for a Dactyl and Golisopod, and the same for the Twin Energy, it covers Golisopod's attack cost very, very nicely. We have a bunch of ways to bring Pokemon from the bench to the active, and so jump into the ladder and see what we can do with this Tricky Gym spicy deck. If you're not following Tricky Gym on YouTube or Twitch yet, definitely go check them out. They produce very good Pokemon TCG content that I'm sure if you enjoy mine, you will also enjoy theirs. All right, so we're up against a metal deck. We are up against a metal deck. All right. And we have a pretty solid start. No supporter, but we don't need a supporter technically, especially if we like with double Jirachi and whatnot. All right, so we are up against probably look metal station. That's usually the uh, metal deck that you see, or the most common metal deck that we do see. And my opponent only knows that we have a Jirachi, he doesn't know anything else, can't attack. Well, could reset stamp my hand. There's the Bronze Song. Uh, which is not going to be a factor here. Technically, he doesn't know, right? Like with a Bulbasaur deck box and a Jirachi active, you know it's not Eternatus because of the Jirachi, but it could be literally every other deck, right? It could be ADP Station, it could be um, Senti Scorch, it could be a Firebox, it could be Spiritomb, it could be uh, Lucario Metal Metal, it could be anything, you know? Uh, okay, me PD, this has been a hot topic lately. Um, the guy who has you put in your program for Super Mario 3D All Stars on Amazon. Nice, very nice. So, me PD, I do not think ADP should be banned, no, because all the non GX and V attackers right now are pretty mediocre, and I don't think banning AD, like banning ADP will make them less mediocre, it won't necessarily fix um, anything. And also, Pokemon 
literally just published today a brand new product that is that contains ADP and Satian. So there is absolutely no humanly possible way that they will purposely um, they will purposely ban a card that they are actively selling. Yeah, it's just it's bad business. You know, <laughs> it's it's really bad business. Therefore, I a hundred one million percent do not expect. Like it might get banned in the online tournament circuit, yes. One million percent, it is not getting banned by TPCI in the 2020-2021 season. Absolutely, just not going to happen. No. All right, we have our evolutions. We don't have any Pokemon though. I mean, any energy, um, which is fine as long as I can still wish into a supporter. Uh, I do have my four research and my four Marnie, my my consistency. All right. What is this, Inaya? This is. Golisopod, which does hard time slash with Aerodactyl, which does fossil fangs. So my button already has three Pokemon, which means my attack is dealing 180 damage. He ends up benching one more V or GX, which he does run. My Golisopod would actually want KO Station. He's also suffering with the energy, but I'm okay to hit KO because this is not ADP, right? I am okay to hit KOing. Perfectly okay, actually. The issue with this deck is getting consistent attacks, I feel. Okay, so there's the Intrepid Sword. We do wake up, which literally doesn't matter. I should thin first before I Stella Wish. I feel like when you do that in real life, you're like, oh, if I had Stella Wished, I would have found a supporter. And then you Stella Wish, and then you don't find a supporter. <laughs> That's what usually happens. Uh, no, that's not true. You just remember those instances. Yeah, the correct procedure is always thin your deck and then you maximize your chances of finding the supporter, which we do indeed find. Um, so I'm gonna grab this, and then this guy has no, it doesn't have to retreat. This guy also doesn't have to retreat. So Golisopod can use triple acceleration and the twin, so that's why I'm promoting the Golisopod. Um, I'll go ahead and do 10 damage to this guy, and then I'll go ahead and research. Yeah, hopefully finding a twin energy so I can use the triples on their dactyls. Perfect. And we'll start getting some damage. We might get our energy, our, oh, this has resistance. We might get our energy removed by full metal wall. We probably will. It's okay if that happens, I think. It's okay if that happens. Ideally, it doesn't because he did attach the energy to the station, so you would assume he didn't get two energies and therefore chose to attach only one. So he might full metal wall with only one energy. That would be the dream. That would definitely be the dream. But Aerodactyl will certainly be the MVP in this. We might have to take a chill turn at some point to go Pokemon Research Lab into more Aerodactyls, but I think that's okay. Metal goggles on the active? That I don't understand. The active is going down anyways unless you mallow Lana. So that I don't actually understand. And my opponent must be kicking himself now for attaching bad energy. If he hadn't, he would probably goes mallow Lana, attach, discard my twin, and start reducing the damage altogether. I do not understand that goggles on the active though. I really don't. Because active's the easiest target I have now. We see a quick ball, discarding Sation. For some Azentam. Okay, so now I'm dealing 230 damage, but these guys have grass resistance, so I'm only dealing 200. Which means I would need six seconds in order to get the KO. There's the switch. I assure you, my opponent. Okay, he does have Marnie though. He does have Marnie, so he's looking to discard my energy, understandably so. 
The fact that he didn't attach it immediately might mean he didn't get it. Which is good. Oh, he did get it, never mind. He was just taking his time to decide for whatever reason. Uh, okay, so this is actually really bad because now I'm gonna have to do this. And I will have to still wish. Okay, so I can Marnie or I can research. I don't think either is great because of my opponent's low, low hand size, but I will go ahead and Marnie. I would love to just continue to attack, right? I would love to continue to apply pressure. So I'll play the stadium, sure. And I'll Marnie, switching card plus triple acceleration would be pretty nice. No switching card, however. I will do this and I'll just pass. So slow and steady for now. Um, my opponent got really good cards off Marnie. Cynthia, Caitlyn, and Malolana. Malolana is definitely gonna be annoying, but the cool thing is, this guy, like, it takes a while to get the damage going, right? Alex, yes, it got announced, like, whilst we've been on this live stream. Yeah. It got announced whilst we have been on this live stream. <laughs> Okay, Samazenta discards my twin energies. It's not the biggest of deals. And yeah, like this attack doesn't even kill me. Okay, so the issue is 180 minus 60 is 120. So I'm not too good killing Locarno Metal with two Aerodactyls. I would need Aerodactyl and then I go this a bit follow up. We do know my opponent has a Mal 1 in his hand, so I'm gonna Marnie. Yeah, it got released, it got announced literally a few, like, less than an hour ago, probably. Less than an hour ago. Okay, well, we get our Golisopod, which is nice. So, I'm not gonna attach the Triple Acceleration, because there's no guarantee that I'll actually find a switching card or a scoop up net. I probably will, but there's no guarantee. So it would have simply been wasted. Now I do find my switch, which is fantastic. I'll grab the scoop of net for later. This guy has 130 HP, so I just die anyways to whatever my opponent does. Um, so I kind of like... Ghostbud has a bigger damage, damage threshold potential. So I'm going to attack with a Redactyl this turn. And go for the fossil fangs. Only 120, but Elizabeth will be able to do uh, 230 minus 60, 170 next turn. So Elizabeth will be able to KO Lucario in the middle if it comes to that. Oh my god, he just gets another tackle. He has the Malolana. I don't know how many he plays, probably four. <laughs> Alex, Shaman EX wasn't a disaster. It was just the company didn't know the game would get so big so quickly, you know? So I feel like you're you're approaching it the wrong way. Yeah. It's good that they learned from the mistake of not making Shaman EX accessible. And then eventually they did make Shaman EX accessible, right? Okay, well the healing is just completely wrecking us. I can't get a KO here though, which is nice. I can't get a KO here. So at least it's something. But we're going very slow. And my opponent, like, he just has a lot. <laughs> I think our opponent will out resource us for sure. Not for sure, but like it, it takes me three, my remaining three triple acceleration energies to get a KO to finish off this Lucario medal. That's the issue. That's the real issue. And Alex, it, in the end, it's supply and demand, you yeah? know? If a lot of people want a card and there's little supply, then that raises the prices and when there's no demand that lowers the prices it happens you know okay marty so why would you promote this guy and then play the switch 
That I don't understand. Okay. So I do have a switch. I don't have any energy or supporters. And still not energy or supporters. I will thin the Jirachi. And sure, I'll grab this other Jirachi in case what I end up getting is research, which I probably will since my two other Marnies are priced. <laughs> Wow, okay. Okay, I do find research. So I'm thinking, I'm gonna discard the fossil. I definitely bench this guy. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna discard the fossil. It sucks, but I'd rather have the wind blood. And then I'll switch into the Aerodactyl, trusting that I will get a triple. Which I do. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now let's go Fossil Fangs. So my opponent shouldn't have the Null Line in hand, though he might have one of the tackles. So we're slowly, very slowly whittling down my opponent. Very slowly. <laughs> Extremely slowly. One, two, three, four. I have eight energy left to win this, I mean, four energy left to win this game. Marnie forever, I guess. What do we get off of this Marnie? We got a triple, we got a Galissapod. That means we get a knockout, which is good, I guess. It's not good that I use a triple though. Uh, wow, okay, never mind. So let me do some math here. 30 damage, the goggles is 30, and the GX is 30. So that's minus 90 damage. I'm dealing 180 minus 90, 90 plus 150. Okay, so I do, in fact, get the KO. The issue is that triple. Oh, wow. I have to. I, I can't not get a KO here. Don't think I can not get a KO. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go hard time slash. Barely get the knockout because of that silly resistance. I do find an Aerodactyl, I do find one of my Marnies. So what my, I only have one triple acceleration left though. So it means I only have benefit of one Aerodactyl. You beat Luke Metal and you're winning last night by spamming Boo plus Tandem Shock on his station with a small amount of damage on it and eventually just wore him down. Wait, Boo? What do you mean, what? Oh, boss. I was like, wait, what? What's Boo? <laughs> spamming Boo. <laughs> okay, we might, might need to take a chill turn here. I will be putting the two Aerodactyls back. Okay, so I know I have two Aerodactyls in the deck. I know I have two Aerodactyls left in the deck. And the Ordinary Rod also seems pretty good here to put back the, um, I guess, one of each, because there should be a Galusipid left. And will my opponent have boss? He might have boss, so I'm not gonna attach. So I'm just gonna go research lab. Okay, my issue now is that since he hasn't benched anything else, this guy can simply, this guy takes three hits to be KO'd and he still has a Malo Lana left. He still has a Malolana left. Is he playing four goggles? He's playing four goggles. Nice. Nice. Spamming Boo. <laughs> but Giovanni is your Boo. Yeah, we can't win. Because I can't two-shot this guy. I absolutely cannot two-shot this guy. So I cannot win this game anymore. My damage is just too heavily reduced. 
So what might need to happen is I need to confuse this person. I think I need to confuse him and hope he just doesn't have switches, which he still has two left. And he doesn't have Malana, which he still has. And at any point, he can um, simply pass the turn and not attack. So we're not winning this one. Yeah. And he can manually retreat too. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind him manually retreating because I can. No, I can't two shot this guy either. No, I actually can with two attacks from her dactyl, which I don't have enough energy to do that anyways. Yeah, we're dead. I'm just gonna concede. The the guy just out resourced me. Um, the resistance, the damage reduction, the goggles. It was just way too much for this deck to deal with, you know, way too much. And obviously he managed his bench properly to reduce the damage from Galisabut, which like people see Galisabut and they're like, oh, this is a great counter to Eternatus because I'll just one kill them with their big bench. But like, if you're Eternatus, why would you play a big bench against this deck where their Pokemon, you just look at them and they get KO'd because they're so fragile. So, meh. All right, Doomsday 94. Who is calling the coin flip? So the deck is definitely wow. The deck is definitely like fun to use and fun to play with. Is it really competitive? It it should never be able to beat ADP, that's for sure. Like a good ADP player that manages their bench, it should never be able to beat that. Um, because of the two for the, the price trade-off, right? If you're not one-shotting and they KO you and they take two prices and then you KO and you take two or three and then they KO you back and then they're already at, down to two prices, then you just lose, right? So you can't beat ADP, you can't beat Lucario Metal. You're already at a loss right there. And Senti Scorch also seems pretty tough. We are up against ADP, so we'll see if Mark Olino is able to manage their bench properly this time around. Um, I do want to go first, I feel. Just on the off chance that I can set up or establish my Aerodactyls with the Stadium or at least play down the unidentified fossil so I can evolve next turn and start applying pressure that way. Because if you KO the ADP on the turn it GXs, then that's good. Though that probably won't happen actually. Yeah, that's actually possible. But I do get the Stadium, which is exactly what I wanted. Nice. If these were two Wimpets, then this would be the dream hand. <laughs> This would be absolutely the dream hand. Okay, so let's tell which. Let's grab. Sure, let's grab this. And I guess we'll do this for two Aerodactyls. Okay, yeah, so if I can get an attack off next turn and then get another one the turn after, I might actually be in an okay spot. Might. Very big might. Okay, immediately benches a Macenta, which I think is a mistake. Because it'll just add up to a tally. <laughs> Alex. Hoping he ends up benching like the Dene and Krogan and whatnot. I mean, for, for me too, I'll be able to get one kills later on, right? Or he might just play it smart and pass here. Well, there's Mobile, so he will look at my hand. And that's great, right? It's another thing that I can one-shot with Golisop. Like, it adds to the Golisop one-shot, which is great, because you expect to see a Seishen and or a Detene at least. So that's enough for Golisop to start taking names. This card's research, so he's aiming to get the GX attack off this turn. And this is where benching a Wimpud would have been the ideal, right? I definitely would love a fourth Wimpud. I definitely would love a fourth Wimput here. If I could have benched a Wimput this first turn, we'd be in a fantastic spot. Because I would threaten the KO, right? If I get a turn to attack, I'm pretty set up to win. Yes, unless my opponent gets the GX attack this turn. If he does, then I'm not set up to win. And now all he needs is an energy switch. If he GX, and then I had a Wimput down and I knocked out the ADP with him benching an extra basic, that would be good. Okay, as long as I can get some damage, 
that's good. As long as I can get some damage, that's good. Uh, let's definitely play that. Let's go ahead and still wish. I can't research away these, obviously. So I'll grab this Kubo net to thin. Okay. So I'm gonna switch for sure. Do I wanna go after the mobile? Because I do have that possibility. Does taking those two prizes actually help me? I don't think it does. And it doesn't really complicate my opponent's GX attack either, so I'll grab an Aerodactyl and then I did check to see how many energy are prized, it really doesn't matter. And Rafa Ruben, thank you so much for the bits. Thank you so much for the 600 bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, if we had benched this guy, then we would have gotten the attack. All right. Now my only play is to sadly confuse him and hope he flips tails. So this went from potentially really good to really bad right away and of course right to top things off we did not find a supporter off of marty which is the number one rule of table one you are not allowed to draw well off of marty and with marty you will also give your opponent the perfect cards he needs in order to accomplish what he needs to do that is the golden table one rule Okay, that is a golden table one rule. As you can see, it's being followed very accurately right here. <laughs> Ruben, thank you so much for the 600 bits. Oh my God, please attack me. Oh my God, he didn't GX for some reason. What? That makes absolutely no sense. Why would you not GX there? That makes absolutely zero sense. Okay, well, I have access to a supporter, I guess, now. What? <laughs> Why did you not GX, friend? I really don't understand why my opponent did not GX. But hey, we'll take it. We will take it. Please let me attack this turn. Oh my God. <laughs> you can't win if you don't attack, stupid Aerodactyl goes. And this is why these decks are crap, yeah? Like, it's a cool idea. These decks are crap, yeah? You need to find so many pieces every single turn. And if you don't, you just lose. These decks are crap, okay? It's a cool idea, big props to Tricky Team for coming up with it. These decks are absolute crap every time. And this would be just as mediocre whether ADP exists or not, okay? Because this resource intensive stage one fragile deck cannot compete with a stage one that you just need to attach to it twice and it just one kills every single thing every single time yeah it just it doesn't work yeah it simply does not work and now my opponent has gx'd now i cannot get a ko on this guy now i found an energy I also found a lot of stuff, I guess. Okay. So, like, sure, I'll get an attack. Ooh. So there is a universe where I can win. No, there isn't, there isn't. There absolutely isn't a universe where I can win. I needed to attack last turn. If I had been able to attack last turn, I would have had a decent chance to win. I absolutely cannot win here because it, it's always the same, right? And now he also has Eldegoth as a target. So I'm just going to play this to show why ADP, it does prevent these decks from being playable. 
But when ADP doesn't exist, this deck goes from mediocre to less mediocre. That's all there is to it. Yeah, that is absolutely all there is to it. And now he goes down to two prizes because I had to bench the Elder Gods to actually do something. And he has two attackers powered up. I can't KO both at the same time. Nothing you can do. Yeah, absolutely nothing you can do. It's a cool idea, it's a cool concept. It would be fantastic if all decks were as balanced as this one. Okay, that's the thing. This is a balanced deck. Whereas Senti Scorch, Eternatus, ADP, those decks are unbalanced. They're extremely powerful. So unless you take all of them <laughs> out of the equation, not only would that make Elizabeth terrible, but um, this would make the deck go from unplayable to very mediocre. Okay, so not the best, not the best. And now we're up against another ADP. Speaking of bands, we will start Wimpato, decent-ish hand. We hope our opponent overextends and forgets what Galizabeth does. If it works for Flygun, why wouldn't it work for Galizabeth, right? <laughs> if people can scoop up net their last basic and let me knock out their Decidui to win, why wouldn't people overbench against a measly Wimput, right? That's gonna go basically draw pass. Not quite, but basically. Well, there's another bench Pokemon that's probably at least 120 damage for me next turn. Hopefully. Hope, hopefully. All right. And this will be the last game of the stream. This will be the last game of the streamer Rooney. Oh, never mind. There's a Duraludon. So we're doing zero damage right now. Well, we're doing 30. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I will want some six second drops to compensate for the resistance. So as long as he benches a station and an ADP, we should be able to um, get a KO on this Duraludon. Terrible draws. I please don't die, when, but you should die, but please don't. Losing the two switches is annoying. Losing the boss. It's not the end of the world. There's the ADP to start things off. There's a quick ball, hopefully for a Detener and Crobat. Nope, there's a Seishen. Okay, we still don't have KO and Duraludon though, because of the resistance. We're doing 110. I mean 100, so we're 10 short. <laughs> we see a Stadium, and we're just gonna see the Intrepid Sword. So my opponent very aware. Hopefully that's Detene, Crobat. No, it's research. <laughs> Could my opponent have asked for a perfect, a more perfect hand? Probably not. Oh my god, please don't. Okay, well, and that's where my opponent will go oopsies. Okay, so I actually could KO. Oh my god, he actually got two energies off of the Intrepid Sword. Nice. How much does Senti Scorch Remax cost, Jari? I don't know about prices but what you should do and what like in order to find out how much they cost if you go to the public trade offers and you search for the card that you're looking for you are very likely to find if they're very recent and uh hot items you'll find you'll see offers for it yeah and whatever they're offering so if you see like people offering a senti scorch vmax for 13 packs or 12 then you can probably make an offer yourself of 10 or 11 probably 11 and it'll probably get accepted okay that's been my experience so far with um with those sort of things okay so i can't get a ko on either station the only thing i can ko is crowbat but if i do that then i i just need to attack the adp yeah. one more gx would have meant ko adp one more GX would have meant KO ADP. Okay. Um, this is not good. This is not a good hand at all. I have the follow up attack, which is good. I can't bench the Elder Gods. I think I'm going to have to bench it one, but. 
They do have the thing to attack with. All right, hard time slash, 230 damage. Lose my energy, next turn heal GX, I will knock him out. So basically, I would need back to back to back knockouts. And we see a boss. I lost to switches just now. I am 100% not going to be able to attack this turn. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, well played opponent, well played. And I'm gonna be forced to bench the Eldegoss too. And I'm gonna lose these resources, so... It's just not good. Like, the only thing that would... be decent here would be... being able to find a switching card. But even then, it's just not great. And hello Jedi Studios, thanks so much for being here. Of course we don't find the switch. Because we have to discard two in the beginning. Because otherwise we wouldn't have done anything. So any small chance we had, which also was not happening because this guy has resistance. This deck is a bit. How am I doing today? I am doing very well, thank you. The decks we are playing are not doing very well, however. This deck on paper looks like a really cool deck. But in reality, it's pretty mediocre. It's actually pretty mediocre. And yeah, Crobat goes down. We get our return KO. So we even up the price trade off, but there's nothing we can knock out for three prizes. They get another knockout. They go down to two or to one prize and then they knock out whatever else because they have two Pokemon fired up. So, or they can simply knock out Eldegoss to win. So there's no humanly possible way for me to win this match at this point. No humanly possible way for me to win this match. If I had been able to place these two damage counters here, then maybe with some sort of magic where we get double scoop up net, I get a KO here, but then I can't KO anything else. So it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. This deck managed to get 30th on the Lex Hexter. I mean, yeah, it's a very mediocre deck. It's a cool idea. It's a really cool idea. But how is it a great deck, Jedi? No, that's exact. I'm saying the opposite. It's not a great deck. It's a terrible deck. It's a mediocre deck. It can never beat ADP Sajan, it can never beat Lucaramel Metal, and it will only beat bad Eternatus players that go, haha, I overbenched and therefore you one kill me with Kalisabad. It's not a good deck. It's not a good deck. On paper, it's an interesting deck. It looks like a cool deck. But when you play it, it's just, you need too many pieces at once and Jirachi isn't enough. If you whip one thing, you're out of the game. If you don't have a perfect, perfect, perfect game, you're out of the game. We have seen in previous videos and in previous live streams how the deck works perfectly against me and I lost games against it because my opponents drew perfectly every single time, right? That's not the case though. Like, that's, if you play 10 games, you will have one perfect game and the other nine will not be good. So, really cool idea, really mediocre deck overall in the current meta game yeah all right so that will be all for today's stream i do have to get going i have a lot to do today and i need to stream in spanish i will be streaming in spanish over on the brave birds facebook channel in case you want to tune into that facebook.com slash brave birds for the spanish stream i'll probably be up um in an hour or so for an hour online playing with um more decks and more fun stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you're watching on YouTube and I will catch you in the next stream. Bye-bye.